Last week the electrician was here. It took me over four weeks to find a decent electrician who has actually some knowledge of battery technology and solar in off-grid systems. It is totally crazy! I rang a few electricians in this area here, but most of them do only grid-connected solar and they haven't had any experience with off-grid systems. Neither had they done any accreditation or had any knowledge in this topic. And a while back I saw these vehicles driving around which had the off-grid in their advertising printed on the vehicle as well. So I searched for them online here specifically in this area, gave them a call and booked them in for a safety and compliance check of my system, of the battery 2.0 and the power wall. Yeah, crazy enough and then it took another three and a half weeks until they had actually time to come in and have a look. So the um, electrician is on its way. I don't know. I'm a bit excited. <laughs> Have mixed feelings about this whole situation. I don't know. <laughs> I hope he. Well, I hope he doesn't say, "Well, like this, we have to disassemble everything, have to reinstall everything from scratch," because this is all not as per regulation. I don't know. But I just hope there are not too many changes they have to make. Uh, probably with the solar a bit. But potentially this needs to come off anyway. So let's see. Wish me luck. <laughs> so he came in, looked at the battery, looked at the whole system and and raised his eyebrows and and i was standing here in this corner here and i thought is that good or bad and he has used batteries before for his projects but nothing like this these were already built batteries and he just connected them at the customer side i uh, can't remember the brand he told me i've forgotten so obviously i explained the battery to him how this is all connected how the bus bar and balance cables work our terminal block here and the different BMSs we have connected, the DC breaker and the bus bar system. And of course, he also had a look at the top section here where we have our DC distribution and the 5 and 12 volt area with a Raspberry Pi in this area here. So thankfully he has dealt with Victron before and has used this equipment for customer projects. But what he has never seen before, two inverters in a series connection. If the MultiPlus 2 needs more power that it can deliver, it can start the Phoenix inverter to add an additional 3 kVA. Yeah, and, and he has used these MPPTs before as well. I also had a copy of this drawing I've shown you in one of the previous videos. So I could explain the whole system to him by following this drawing. And I guess so far I could impress him a bit, I think. But then it was time for me to ask some questions about the things I'm not so sure about. Something like grounding, for example, you know. If you search online, you can find very controversial opinions about grounding of solar systems. Some say it needs to be connected to the main earth rod, the main grounding system you already have in your building. You can also find opinions that you need a separate, an isolated, a different grounding method for your solar system. So a second earth rod. See, here on the outside, there's my, there's my uh, ground, my earth rod, and the yellow cable there goes into my solar, and the other yellow one goes into my meter box. So at the moment here, I've got both the solar and the electrical installation connected to the same earth system, the same earth point. Because you can, you can find these rules online, if you put a second one in, it needs to be a certain distance away from the first one. So the overall length of the second earth rod should be the distance to the first earth rod. Something like this. And all this is not really clear to me how to actually do this correctly. But I think connecting it to the same earth point is the right method to do because you don't want to have two different earth points. You could potentially have a difference between these two points. You know the soil is a bit drier on one location than on the other. And I think whatever you connect to your building 
made out of metal should be on the same potential as you are, right? This is the whole this is the whole purpose of a grounding system. And in relation to this, I have also shown him the SPDs, the surge protectors we have put into our solar isolator here. I I never connected them actually because I still don't know how the best way is, how the correct way is to connect them up. Yes, they connect to positive and negative at the top and earth on the bottom, but believe me, it is not that simple. And for, for obvious safety reasons, I want to have my grounding as per the standard, as per the rules. It's a safety feature, right? I'm certainly not an expert in grounding. And I'm not feeling confident that I have done the right thing here, that this is the correct method to ground everything. Yeah, so these problems and the fact that we are getting bigger and bigger and bigger with the off-grid garage here was the main reason to book in this electrician to have a look at the standard to do a full safety and compliance check here. And of course, we also looked at the solar panels on the roof here. I um I told him about the I told him about the two strings of the Canadian solar panels here, which have cracks. So yeah, this is still the uh, situation up here on the roof. And um, well, the problem is, is this, uh, this installation is not as um, conform to the regulations here at the moment. Um, as some of you have pointed out already, the distance to the edges of the roof um, is not as per the standards. It is usually the height of your solar panels times two needs to be the distance all around the panels to all sides. So this is the clearance you need to have around your panel setup on the roof. And I, because I have raised them here, this distance times two needs to be my, this needs to be my clearance around the whole solar setup. So, which I don't have here. He wasn't too concerned about the bottom part here because there's a roof attached to the other roof. So this could be seen as one roof, but certainly here at the end of the garage and at the front of the garage, and also here at the top, this is all not conform. I could of course um, squeeze all these panels now together to get more space at the front and back of the garage, but I don't have this option here at the top. So in theory, I need to take off five panels here, one of each row, and then the whole system would not work anymore because we will have only around 65 volts or something then coming from the panels under ideal conditions. If we have some shading or something, they would not produce enough power then to actually charge my battery. So two in series are not enough with these panels here because these are only 60 cell modules. Yeah, and then we've got the issue with these six panels here that they start cracking underneath. The, the lamination actually starts cracking and we can see through from the top. So I would need to replace these two strings here, but um, with what? You know, the problem is, you know, the problem is these panels are so rare to get because these panels were used like eight to 10 years ago. And then we moved on from 60 cell modules to 72 cell modules like these ones here, which have then a higher voltage and you can actually use only two of these modules to make it work with a 48 volt system, which you barely can do with two of these panels here. Under ideal conditions, it may work, but if you have some shading or some clouding, it it's it's just not good. Yeah, and I had a look online and at the moment there is nothing on the market which I could use here because I'm really restricted to this size of panels here at the moment. So I would need to get rid of one panel and move the other two up to uh, to get the clearance around the uh, solar system. Yeah, so um and and I asked him, well, what can we do? What's what are the options here now? And he said, "Why don't you get new panels?" I said, no, no, that is too expensive and I have got these ones here already. He said, but your roof is not suitable for this amount of panels here. So if I want to stay conform with the regulations, I could fit maximum 2.5 kilowatt on each side of the roof here. So 5 kilowatt here on the garage, a bit on the shed here and something here on the carport as well. So um, I'm actually testing some new panels at the moment here. Quickly, I, I will make some dedicated videos with these panels here. So these are the Hyundai, um, these are the HIE 
S400 UF. I also only knew the VG panels, but not the UF ones. So the UF panels are usually used in utility grade installations. Large scale solar, yeah, like solar farms. And they come with a 25 year warranty for power performance and also workmanship. Yeah, and you can see here the open circuit voltage is almost 50 volts. So I cannot, I cannot install three of them in series with my existing solar charge controllers anymore because they can only handle 150 volts and these panels already have 49.5 volts. And then if you take the temperature into account, you can come over 50 volt open circuit voltage, which can actually destroy your solar charge controller. So you need to be very careful. So we can only put two of these panels in series, which gives us 100 volt DC, perfectly fine. Yeah, I know, right? They are shingled panels again. But some of you have actually suggested these panels here and said they are actually producing more energy in shading or cloudy conditions. So um, hence, um, I've got one sitting with the others. But more about this in a separate video. So the electrician took some measurements here to get the roof area and did some calculations with these panels and some other 540 watt panels from Phono. Well, his recommendation now would be, let's go on the roof again. Let's go up here again. So his recommendation would be to remove all these panels, remove all the panels on the east side as well. Install the Hyundai shingled panels here, two in series, five in parallel, which will give us four kilowatt peak on each side of the roof. So we would have eight kilowatt alone on the garage. Six of the Phono 540 watt here on the carport on a 10 degree angle and another eight of the Hyundai shingled panels on the shed over there. Right, it, it, it's in total shade at the moment, but you will see not far, not too far away. We will get the sun over here and then, we've, and then we've got full sun on this roof, like on the carport now. Look at this, there's no shading, nothing. It's in full sun. And then you have got this power coming in step by step. You've got full power from here, a little bit of power here, a little bit less power there, almost no power coming from there. And then the shade rolls in from this side again and we've got full sun on this roof. So we have quite a big area here which we can cover with solar panels. So this all in total for a so this all in total would be like 14.4 kilowatt peak then all in total. All roofs covered but not not the west side of the shed then we could potentially do this ourselves then later on if we want to. Yeah, and then there would be two more solar charge controllers up here as per our design. Uh, one for the carport and one is for the shed. And this all would be then connected here to our main DC bus bar and uh, charges our batteries. And I thought, well, 14.4 kilowatt peak installed by a licensed electrician. This gets really expensive, right? This gets... And he said, wait a moment because you are then eligible for the STC. The STC here in Australia is the Small Scale Technology Certificates. So this certificate trading system has been introduced like 20 years ago here in Australia. So how this all works is, well, if I put a solar system on top of my house here, I create a certain amount of these certificates. And big polluters here in Australia, they need to buy a certain amount of these certificates. So they actually subsidize my installation of solar. So this, this is roughly how it works. And of course, you only get these certificates if you get your solar installed by an installer, which has the accreditation. Well, and with my used solar panels, I never bothered with that because... So if asked the electrician, I said, well, how much could that actually be, right? And he took his calculator out again and typed some numbers in and said, and he said, well, this could be at around six to seven thousand dollars in certificates. I said, okay, and now we are talking. So this is a direct discount on your purchase price of around 500 Australian dollars per kilowatt peak installed. So basically I would get all these new, beautiful, full under warranty, 25 year warranty panels for half the price. So, and alone from a financial perspective now, this makes this 
a very tempting option. I know I always said this is a do-it-yourself channel here and we're doing everything ourselves here as far as possible. But um, well, we have now the, the problem with the um, cracked solar panels here, which I have really trouble to replace. The option would be to take one string away from the west roof and put this on the east roof. So we have only four strings in parallel on each side of the roof, which would be like 2.8 kilowatt peak on each side. But I have um, somehow got this feeling this is just the beginning with these panels. And we also had a look at the um, meter box here and, and the panel which needs obviously a bit of an upgrade from the 70s. Well, I explained the overall goal would be to connect the house as well to the system here, to the battery and the solar on the sheds. And then once our high feed-in tariff here with the grid tie solar is finished, we could integrate the solar on top of the house as well to charge our batteries here. And I told him about the existing cables here between the garage and the house as well. So a quick summary here. We've got a three-phase supply, but only two phases of them are going to the house with a neutral or a pen. This is all done in 10 square millimeter cable. And there's also a four millimeter, four square millimeter cable for the hot water system next to the house, which uh, runs on a different tariff here. So this is a different a different circuit. They can, they can remotely turn off this circuit here in peak times when electricity is very expensive. And then it turns off your non-essential load like hot water systems and pool pumps and this sort of stuff. So the electrician was actually quite confident that he can work with these existing cables keep the grid tie high feed-in solar tariff connected to the grid and connect the rest of the house to our power wall and battery system here with the existing cabling. Because I told him digging a trench here or using over line overhead cables is not an option. The, the high feed-in tariff runs until mid of 28. This is less than six years away. And either we can work around it or we have to wait until the contract runs out. And then we can connect the house and the grid tied solar to our system here. And then we should have enough power. So all in all, I think he was quite impressed of what, um, what we have done, the community and I, here in the off garage with the installation, the design. And I was quite relieved that there's not a major fault or something and the electrician said, oh, no, we cannot, we cannot have this and we need to change that and this is not correct. And <sighs> now, thankfully not. So the only thing we need to add is the correct labeling for the batteries here. There are some green stickers necessary for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, I think a sticker with the uh, shutdown procedure, how to shut the whole system down and how to turn it back on again. This is a regulation. And what else was it? There was, we need another device installed here on the power wall, which is called a ground fault alarm. It connects to our DC bus to, to positive and negative and also to ground. And it constantly monitors if there is not a connection between ground and one of your DC legs, which, which there shouldn't, right? Which there shouldn't. And this is necessary because we are running a higher voltage on the solar system here. So we are coming in with a maximum of 150 volts here, DC, and we've got a 50 volt battery bus. Unfortunately, these ones are not isolated solar charge controllers. We could have potentially 150 volt DC here on our battery bus. And therefore, the regulation says this needs to be monitored. And in case of a fault of one of these solar charge controllers, there will be an alarm. Uh, I think it is only a light which goes on and also a buzzer inside of this um, relay thingy. But it actually doesn't do any, it doesn't turn anything off or something. It is just an alarm necessary at this point of time. So this is something the electrician will install as well if we go ahead with all this installation here in the off-grid garage. Yeah, so overall, um, it is actually not too bad. It gives us some option with connecting the house and also upgrading the solar and getting the other two roofs covered with solar as well while staying within the regulations. And then obviously do these minor changes here with this um, ground fault alarm and the labeling and stuff like this. So, and, and we have the electrician looking into the ground system as well. I'm not sure what the correct solution there is, but I'll certainly keep you informed. And I'll tell you what, 14.4 kilowatt peak 
is certainly very tempting. That is a lot of power. I will have a huge surplus on power in summertime, of course, but we need to think about winter as well. And as you know, my goal was always to reach this 1000 watts of production of solar production, solar energy production on the roof here in shading conditions. So in theory, we should have enough energy even in wintertime to charge our battery, to use the power inside the house then to charge the vehicle as well. Yeah, there's, there's certainly so much going on in my head at the moment here with all these new options. And uh, we certainly have to test these Hyundai panels here with 25 years warranty. The utility crate Hyundai solar, the 400 watt utility crate shingled solar panels from Hyundai. Really keen to test them. Okay guys, so far this video from today, this was the quick summary of the electrician visit uh, last week. <sighs> survived it and until the next video guys you stay charged stay safe and as always thank you very much for watching see you then bye bye well and there goes the off-grid electrician after he was here probably three hours